NYU, Weinstein Hall. My roommate is Tom, captain of the Star Trek Club. And I have a massive crush on him. It's so bad that on the white cinder block walls, I've hung photos of Tom and me all over. In the photos, Tom's parents say, I look like Sal Minio. Tom, who's Sal Minio? He's that guy in Rebel Without a Cause who has a crush on James Dean and gets beaten up. You're not gay, are you, Reggie? Uh, no, Tom, I like pussy. <laughs> Tom has this girlfriend, Elvira, a psych major. Every time Tom and Elvira have sex, Elvira belts something really loud and fierce and shrill, like a mouse crawled up her leg. Ah, ah, ah. Well, you know what I don't like, Tom? I don't appreciate you and Elvira having sex in the dorm. I've got some major final exams, and I'd appreciate it if you took it elsewhere. I'm alone in the dorm room trying to study, and it's really difficult because I see Tom's laundry bag on the floor, and I have this urge to go in it and chew Tom's underwear. There's a knock on the door. It's Maria. Maria is this Filipina musical theater major. Uh, we sing show tunes at the Weinstein Hall Cabaret. We're singing Jesus Christ Superstar. We are a big hit at the dorm. Well, Maria tells me that her roommate Wanda, this big nympho filmmaker, is having sex. See, every time Wanda wants to have sex, she puts on the door, Maria, your mother calls, I'm serious. And that's Maria's cue to leave. It's been so bad that everyone in the dorm kept coming up to me and they're like, Reggie, what's wrong with Maria? Why doesn't she call her mom? Is it a Filipino thing? Like, what's up? <laughs> so I tell Maria, I say, you know, Tom's with Elvira. I'll sleep in Tom's bed, but you could sleep in my bed. So I'm turning off the light, I'm about to go to sleep, and Maria whispers in my ear, Reggie, let's do it. Let's have sex. Well, I have never had sex with anyone, but maybe this was going to be my opportunity. Maria, I will have sex with you, but first I must take a shower. It was the longest shower I ever took. <laughs> I was squeaky clean. I reached for my coconut body shop gel. I reached for my mango conditioner. I reached for my papaya exfoliator. <laughs> By the time I got out of the bathroom, I smelled like a tropical fruit salad for Maria. <laughs> I wrapped the towel over my breasts like a vessel virgin, offering myself up to Maria, the goddess of heterosexuality and show tunes. I mean, she was Mary Magdalene, so that means I was Jesus. <laughs> Jesus, this is so stressful. I walk out of the bathroom, and I see that Maria's bra and underwear are on the floor. I didn't know what to do, so I dropped the towel and flew on top of her like Peter Pan. And she said, ouch. And if I look down, I look like Tom Cruise from Mission Impossible. And if I looked up, I looked like Ariel, the Little Mermaid. Wish I could be in a heterosexual world. And I started to kiss her neck, and Maria made a sound. <laughs> I was really impressed with Maria's vocal range. <laughs> and I wasn't sure what to do, so I just decided I should just go lower. And I got lower, I got between Maria's breasts, and everyone loves breasts, and her breasts were like headphones where I could hear her heartbeat. And I knew at some point I should suck in one of the breasts, and I didn't know which breast. So I felt like a Robert Frost poem.
the breast not taken. So I decided to go for the left breast. It was very marsupial. Uh, it was my marsupial coming out. I came out as a marsupial. I didn't know how long I should do this. I was waiting for Skittles to fall from the sky. Or like some, something should happen. I didn't know what to do. And so then I got lower and lower, and then I got there, and I had noticed some moisture down there, so now I'm having sex with a humidifier. <laughs> I didn't know how to turn it off. <laughs> and, and Marie was like, shh, it's okay. And Marie was trying to reach for my penis, but I had no penis, I couldn't find my penis. And at that point, I felt like I was over Marie. I felt like a coin over a wishing well. Maria, I really like you, and I'm so sorry, but I, I, I just, I can't do this. And I'm about to cry, and I'm putting my clothes back on, and I'm running out of the dorm, going through the courtyard. And as I walk through the courtyard, I could see Elvira's window, and she's having sex with, with Tom, and I could hear her going, ah, 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 but this time, I think she's laughing at me, at me, and I'm crying, and I'm going up University Place through 8th Street, past Broadway, and I don't know where I'm running, and as I get to St. Mark's Place, I see all these guys, very beautiful guys, in black leather jackets that are going into Boy Bar, and I have never been to Boy Bar, and I sneak in to the herd of these beautiful guys, and I'm inside this bar, and I hear Lisa Stanfield, she's all the rage, and I'm hearing, been around the world and I, 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 I can't find my baby. I don't know where he can be. He's my baby and I am dancing. And I am a sexy molecule of Filipino-ness and Malibu and Coke. And I am dancing the shame away. People are looking at me. I am the hottest thing there. And I see this tall guy smiling at me. He tells me he's from France and we are dancing. And he wants to come over to my place. And I take him into my dorm room and I put my hands under his sweatshirt and I can feel his, his ribs and we kiss. And it's as if our our most perfect palettes are open, and we have our arms around each other like divers that are free-falling into a sea of pearls. And it's in that moment, in the way that we move, in the way that we glide, that I actually find who I am, who I really am, who I know me. And I didn't feel shame, I felt at last, all of this, this fear was gone. There's a knock on the door, and it's Tom. Reggie, are you okay? And I'm giggling under the sheets, and I say, Tom, your mom called. <laughs> I'm serious. <laughs> 